Integer division and modular arithmetic are two mathematical concepts that are quite important in computer science and also just for using in certain algorithms. So let's take a look at integer division first. Integer division basically means we're going to uh, ignore the remainder. So when you first learn division you probably learned that there's a quotient and a remainder. In this case we're just going to ignore the remainder. So um, 20 divided by 2, for instance, is obviously just 10, but so is 21 divided by 2. Even though you might think, okay, 21 divided by 2 is 10, remainder 1. All we're interested in is the quotient, so we just ignore the remainder 1. And so you can see 22 divided by 2 is 11, but so is 23 divided by 2, etc. Now, integer division by 4. If you're coming to this video from my video on finding the day of the week given any date, then you need to know integer division by 4. So again, we're just ignoring the remainder. So 20 divided by 4 is obviously 5, but so is 21 divided by 4, 22 divided by 4, and 23 divided by 4. We don't get to 6 until we get to 24 divided by 4, and you can see the rest of that progression. Integer division by 10 in some ways is the easiest because we sort of live in a base 10 numeral system for the most part. So integer division by 10 basically just means ignore the units digit and only pay attention to uh, the numbers that come before the units digit. So in this case 20 divided by 10 is 2 obviously but so is 24 divided by 10. 42 divided by 10 we just ignore the 2 and we get 4. 57 divided by 10 similarly we get 5 and so integer division by 10 is very straightforward. There really is no standard mathematical symbol. I used the classical um, division symbol that you'll see on any four function calculator, but you could use a slash or you could use two slashes. Different computer languages have different ways to represent integer division. Sometimes they use different symbols for regular division and integer division, but sometimes it just depends on what the two numbers are, the dividend and the divisor. If it's a typed language and the two numbers are integers, then typically the division will result in an integer, so that will be integer division. And if they're floating point numbers, then the result will be floating point. Um, but languages like Python have a different symbol, either a single slash or a double slash, depending on what you want to do. So you have to be very, very careful. Uh, in computer programming languages to make sure that you're actually getting the result that you actually want. Now modular arithmetic is almost like the opposite of integer division. Instead of ignoring the remainder, we only care about the remainder. So if you're doing arithmetic modulo 10, basically that is asking the question, what is the remainder when you divide by 10? So 13 divided by 10 is 1 remainder 3. And so uh, 13 mod 10 is 3. Now you notice I use a symbol there that is very common with uh, modular arithmetic which is the three bars and it's sometimes um, said as equivalence. So 13 mod 10 is equivalent to 3 or you could also write it as 10 is equivalent to 3 and then put the mod 10 in brackets. And again arithmetic modulo 10 is pretty straightforward because we use base 10. It just basically means uh, ignore everything except for the units digit. So 42 mod 10 would be 2, 87 mod 10 would be 7. Now again if you are coming to this from the video on calculating the day of the week uh, based on any given date you need to do arithmetic modulo 7 because we have 7 days in the week and so it's very important for that algorithm. So 10 mod 7 is asking the question what's the remainder when you divide 10 by 7. Another way to think about it is uh, how much more is 10 than the greatest multiple of 7 that's less than 10? So 10 is 3 more than 7, and that's why 10 mod 7 is 3. Um, and you can see with 30 mod 7, you could think of it as 30 divided by 7 is 4 remainder 2. We really don't care about the 4. We could just think that 30 mod 7 is 30 is 2 greater than 28, and 28 is the greatest multiple of 7 that is less than 30. And then 90 mod 7, similarly, because it's 6 more than 84, 90 mod 7 is 6. Now, you've probably actually already done some arithmetic modulo 12 without even realizing it, because we have a 12-hour clock, or at least in North America, most of us use a 12-hour clock. If you're looking at a flight schedule or you're looking at um, European time, you may come across times uh, with numbers bigger than 12, like 15. So to convert that back into more familiar AM-PM, 
you would do 15 mod 12 to get 3, in this case 3 p.m. Uh, 23 would become 11, or 23 o'clock, if you like, is equivalent to 11 p.m. Uh, 23 mod 12 is 11. Or if you're adding, so let's say you're starting at 5 p.m. and you're adding 36 hours, and you want to know, well, what's the time going to be? 5 plus 36 is 41. And 41 mod 12 is, of course, 5. Uh, it would be 5 a.m. if you're starting at 5 p.m. But when you're doing that kind of addition with a clock, uh, you're basically using arithmetic mod 12. Um, now, again, if you are trying to um, use the algorithm to calculate a day of the week, given a certain date, you're going to be adding up a series of numbers and then you're going to be interested in the result mod 7 or modulo 7. So there's kind of three ways you can do this. One way is just add up all the numbers uh, as you would normally. So let's say the numbers are 4, 5, 20, 1, and 8. So you add them all up, you get 38. And then figure out what 38 mod 7 is. And that is 3 because 38 divided by 7 is 5 with remainder 3 or 38 is 3 more than 35, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, you could also keep a running total. So when I do the algorithm to calculate a daily week, this is the way I do it. I do a running total. So I would do 4 plus 5, which is 9, and 9 mod 7 is just 2. And then I would say, all right, now 2 is my running total. I, I'll add 20 to that, and I get 22. 22 mod 7 is just 1. And so I'm starting with 1 again. I add 1 to that. I get 2. don't have to do anything to that. 2 mod 7 is just 2. And then finally, I'll add 8 to that. 2 plus 8 is 10, and 10 mod 7 is 3. And that keeps the numbers as small as they possibly can be and makes the addition a little simpler. A few more calculations to do along the way, though. You could also group by convenience. So you could say, well, 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 mod 7 is 2. But then we have a 20 and a 1 together. And 20 plus 1 mod 7 is just 0, because 21 is a multiple of 7. And then finally, 8 mod 7 is just 1. So really, all you have to do is add 2 plus 0 plus 1. And that gives you 3. So either way, either way you do it, you get 3. Uh, the convenience grouping is not always going to work out, because it depends on some numbers just being convenient. Um, so I would try, probably, if you're going to do the algorithm for calculating the day of the week, try to do the running total. That would probably be the easiest one. Now, modular arithmetic is actually quite an important branch of mathematics, and it was first um, described by one of the most famous mathematicians of all time, Carl Friedrich Gauss, at the very beginning of the 19th century. So you can read more about it and read more about Gauss if you're interested in this topic.